Hey guys, this week's podcast is our free agency and trade reaction episode. Welcome to the Coach and Commish podcast. No, not Adam Gase, and definitely not Roger Goodell. It's Chris and Sean breaking down fantasy football for the everyday man. Welcome back to episode what 137. It's been so long, man. I don't even know what the number is, but you're here with a coach and commish. That's Sean on my right. Uh, my name is still Chris, but uh, we've been gone for a few months. We're, we're still alive out here for our, uh, you know, for Tim Cook out there who mm. wondered if we were still around. And yeah. we had a few guys on Facebook that wanted to get some input on, on free agency. Shout out, Josiah. We're back. And, we're, and this episode's for you because you're asking <laughs> these questions. Had some big life events happened here. This man is... I got, newly married. Got married in January, so getting used to the the, the newlywed life and uh, busy business yep. of that. We had a uh, a little frenemies, you know, old school used to be frenemies used podcast be. shout out at the wedding. I was the best man, so I did a little mm-hmm. uh, speech and included the Fitz Magic for those of you that remember the Fitz Magic debut. So go back to season one <laughs> of our podcast. The terror on Chris's face when that clip came on the screen. He was he was afraid I was going to play a little bit more of the. There was some humor there. I was worried <laughs> for my mother to hear, uh, so I was very terrified. And oh man, it was a blast of the past. We were in your kitchen. Yep. Trying to find the best angle because we didn't build out this studio yep. that we're in now. Uh, Ryan was in there. Yep. Oh, man. That, Absolutely. I saw Ryan the other night, too, man. It was a Ryan sighting. Goodness. Yeah. A Ryan sighting. Ryan sighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anywho, so that was a blast in the past. But we have been surprised, excited with the trades that happened this offseason, some of the free agency. The NFL has turned spots. into fantasy football is basically it, what happened. <laughs> it totally has. On the trades itself, we're used to big signings. And we're jumping into some of our reactions. We're, we're got top five offseason moves for fantasy purposes only. Uh, and almost all but one of them surrounded or is, is around a trade that happened that we never see in the NFL. Yeah, especially before free agency starts, a lot of these were, were matriculating down to where teams were just going after it. Like, I think a big part of it was the Rams. I mean, mm-hmm. you see what you see what the Rams did with building that super team and just saying, "I'm going all in right now. Let's go win a championship," and it worked. Yeah. So I think that that's what GMs are seeing is like, well, why not? Why not trade away these future assets, go for it this year, and try to win a Super Bowl? The Rams do it all the time with trading away their first round pick, and yeah. then that's what we see. With some of these um, topics, some of these moves that we'll talk about. A lot of first-round picks just being bye-bye when in old-school NFL, you wanted the cheaper, younger player. And that's no longer the secret to making an, a, a championship run. Yep. So let's start it off here um, with probably the one that everyone knew was going to happen this offseason. We just didn't know where he would end up. And that's Deshaun Watson. Um, it moved fairly quick, in my opinion. I, I, I thought maybe it would draw out a little bit longer. You know, there, there was that whole, is he going to go to Miami, or not Miami, is he going to go to Atlanta, where he's from, is he going to go to New Orleans, and then all of a sudden, Cleveland, who was out of the running, they get they get their guy. I was surprised, <laughs> extremely surprised by that destination, but excited about what that offense can do. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I don't, I'm not sure you're going to find anyone who argues with you that. Deshaun Watson helps that offense a lot more than Baker Mayfield did. And, and he's sprinkling. They got a receiver as well. Yeah, the the Amari Cooper trade. I mean, again, we're not going to be able to cover everything on no. this episode because of <laughs> everything many. that happened, but we'll kind of hit some of the highlights. And Amari Cooper was another one that happened even before Deshaun Watson. Uh, that one shocked me. Yeah. Um, I guess they were planning on trying to get Deshaun Watson. So, they're the like, like I said, team's going all in. And I think um, that... The Deshaun Watson thing is huge for Amari Cooper because a lot of people that, you know, you're in dynasty leagues or whatever, you had Amari Cooper, you probably yeah. were pretty disappointed with the fact that he went to Cleveland. Out of all the destinations, you were hoping probably for something else. But now with Deshaun Watson there, Too now excited. there's a suspension that we yeah. have to we have to know that is likely to come down. Um, in these situations, the NFL does like to wait till the legal process is finished. So there's a possibility it doesn't happen this season and maybe it gets pushed off. Um, but I do think there'll be some type of um, suspension. We don't know what that is. My speculation is probably in the six to ten game range. I don't think it'll be a full season, um, but it may be. I mean, it's 
we, we kind of stay away from the legal part of what, oh, yeah. what happens there. I don't like any of the stuff on that end. I mean, you ain't going to find an argument on this side. We'll talk the fantasy part of it. Yeah. And um, I'm curious, what do you think this means for the running backs, Chris? Because that's going to be a big question. Mm-hmm. Is like a Nick Chubb and a Kareem Hunt. Let's, let's go under the assumption that Deshaun Watson plays half the season at a, at a minimum. Okay, so I I believe, without giving you like hard figures of what the receptions will be, out of the backfield, I see Kareem Hunt getting a bigger role out of, of a passing volume. Okay. And and maybe Nick Chubb gets a little bit hurt there. Okay. He becomes truly a first, second down back, and Kareem Hunt becomes more valuable in PPR formats. I'm actually, if I had my alert button here, Uh-oh. I would I would disagree with, with you. Hit the ding, ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> um, I, I actually think that this move hurts Kareem Hunt more to me than it does... Um, Nick Chubb, because of what Deshaun Watson tends to do, and that's scramble. Yeah. And so I think there could be less of that dump off that you were seeing from a Baker Mayfield um, who was hurt last year, was less likely to get out of the pocket. Probably a few more dump offs were headed Kareem Hunt's way. So I think overall the offense will be better. So maybe it's not a, a huge loss for Kareem Hunt, but. Yeah. If I'm picking between running backs, I, and that's not saying I'm sure you would probably still take Nick Chubb over Cream Hunt. Is that oh, true? Yeah, I would, yeah. But I, I think that I think Nick Chubb will be undervalued this year. That's the way I'll put it. I think that people will be scared off by the fact that now they have Deshaun Watson, who's going to throw the ball deep and not not worry about running back as much. And I think Nick Chubb will become a value to where people will be drafting him as like the 15th running back, and I'm willing to take him closer to that top 12. Yeah. No. I- I can see that argument. I can see that. But so Deshaun Watson kicked off the crazy trade train, <laughs> trade train that started happening. And another big one that happened, Devontae Adams being traded to the Raiders. Just the names that are involved in these are just are baffling. Names. Like it's it's one thing for these trades to happen with even like middling names, like like an Amari Cooper. That's something we kind of thought could happen. But Devontae, I mean, you're talking like the number one wide receiver in fantasy for how many years here? Yeah. Like that. I in that, his it shocked me. I in his prime. You're not trading an old man away. <laughs> and Rod, you know, the memes went around of Rogers, you know, signing his deal and then looking at where did Devontae go? Like <laughs> it was it was a pretty hilarious little um way that the events transpired there. Yeah, with we talked about the the Texans trading away earlier, Deshaun Watson. They got a ton of picks. I think it helps their organization out. Uh the Packers get some instant relief with a first and a second, but I mean, the Raiders getting Devontae Adams, reconnecting him with Carr. I don't know if it's a wash on who won here, but it looks like when you get Devontae Adams to you your win. team, you clearly win. I think it was there was there was definitely a contract problem going on between Devontae Adams and Green Bay. And yeah. he's been vocal about that he's wanted to play with Derek Carr again, his college quarterback. So I think it was probably the type of thing where he was like, I'm going to make your life miserable unless you make this trade happen. So they decided, let's get a first and a second out of it and not have a disgruntled player. And, and the extension that Adams gets there, he wanted to be paid top dollar, which the Packers wouldn't do because they had yep. to give it to Rodgers, who we'll talk about later. Carr also gets an extension Yep, big, out of this too, just a couple days ago. That just recently happened, yeah. So I'm curious for you, who do you, where do you think Derek Carr stacks up now? Is he somebody that in a redraft league – of a 12-team league that you're considering as your starting quarterback. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where he'll end up ADP-wise, but just where do you think, quick off the cuff, where do you, where would you put Derek Carr? Is he a top-10 guy, or is he beyond that? No, I think he's a top-10 guy. I might I might be able to understand where people might take him between 7 and 10. Okay, that's probably about where I am. I think that um, – because he has like no rushing ability, it's going to be hard for him to crack that top seven and get it, get above those guys. Um, but Devontae Adams obviously doesn't hurt any value of Derek Carr. As the dynasty owner over here of Derek Carr, I'm sure you were happy <laughs> with this move. I was extremely happy. I was looking for a better QB2 in my <laughs> league. I had Mahomes at QB1. Almost traded Mahomes away to get more assets back to kind of help diversify some depth. And then I saw that happen. I'm like, nope, I'm going to sit on Carr now. But now with Carr, there's so much heat in there. Because what's this... You got Adams coming in. What does this do to the rest of the offensive players fantasy-wise? I'm talking Renfro. I'm talking Waller, specifically those two. I think they take a hit, for sure. I don't, there's You can't say that Devontae Adams comes in and all of a sudden isn't the huge target shareholder. Um, I think 
Waller is most the most affected in my opinion because he was a target monster and that's where he kind of made his hay when he was a tight end. He's been hurt. He didn't look quite as good at the end of last year. That may no. have just been trying to get back from the injury. So he scares me the most, and I think that fantasy players will still value him as that top three or four tight end, and I'm I'm probably going to have him closer to five or six to where if he's going to go in the top five rounds, I'm probably staying away. Okay. Uh, I know we're not talking about <laughs> Waller right now, but Pitts or Waller, who are you taking? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to me, those are two bad options. <laughs> to me, those would be two people that I probably am going to be further down on. I'll let other people take them because okay. ADP-wise, I think they're going to be drafted too high. Pitts, I mean, we'll talk later about um, where Matt Ryan went, but he no longer has a quarterback. I mean, Mariota, I guess, is there now. But yeah. that's that's a scary situation. I probably take Pitts for the upside just because I know that he hasn't reached his full potential yet. And there is no one else in Atlanta, so yeah. he is going to get a crazy target share this off season. I mean, this season, I would assume. All right, one more question for you about Devonte Adams: What statistical hit will Adams take moving from Rodgers now to Carr? What part of that fantasy value, stat wise, that we're going to see with draft kits and rankings coming into the summer? Yeah, I think that you know Devonte Adams for a lot of people was probably the number one wide receiver before this trade. Um, he's one or two probably on pretty much anybody's ranking list with this trade happening. I think he moves down more to the five or six range. Mm. Um, that for, that's what I think people will do. I'm probably, I'm probably right around that area to where I think he's talented enough. And this is hard for me to, to separate because just a quick backstory of, I had Devonte Adams <laughs> that I traded for with a guy in our, our league named Tim James and I thought he was going to be amazing, and he was terrible for his rookie season. I mean, awful. Like, oh, yeah. way, way bad. Like, everybody thought that this guy was a flop and we're never going to use him. And then all of a sudden, he was amazing. And so I just have this, like, part of me that just does not like Devontae Adams for ruining my season that year. But anyways, that aside, he is extremely talented, and I think that he can still be a top six, seven, somewhere in that range wide receiver um it's just really going to come down to what target share he gets and the risk factor may make me move on to other wide receivers and for me look at 100 receptions double digit touchdowns can they happen with this it was easy with Rodgers because Rodgers looked for him and Aaron Rodgers a freakingly amazing quarterback (laughs) that makes any throw if I had to say efficient in the red zones yeah which one might go down I I think the 100 receptions might fall down I still think there'd be double digit touchdowns because Carr's gonna look his way in the red zone. Okay. So in PPR formats, it might take a little bit of a hit because who McDaniels is coming over there to LA. I mean not yeah, LA. <laughs> the Vegas. Vegas. Not LA. <laughs> to Vegas. In that area. We're, we're not quite sure what that offense will look like. So he's still gonna be, I agree, top five. Um, but his stats will come down a little bit, point totals. And <clears throat> Another big name. So there's all these are big names. Russell Wilson. So gets, we go from your dynasty quarterback to my dynasty quarterback, yeah. and Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson traded to the Broncos for a decent amount of picks, not what the Texans gave, but I think uh, there's definitely a rebuild in Seattle. Hey, don't leave Drew Lock out of this deal. They got Drew Lock. <laughs> they got Drew Lock and Noah Fant, <laughs> right? Um, but the Broncos, tons of talent there offensively. They could not get a QB. John Elway probably could have came down and played better than all their other quarterback options, um, even for Teddy Two Gloves. But Russell Wilson to the Broncos, what is your – what do you think – Russell's always been a top 10 quarterback. Do you think he rises now being in this offense? Remember the two receivers he just left. I'm excited for Russell because there's, you know, you let Russ cook. That's been the the saying, like, let let Russ cook. And they kind of let him cook in the past year or so, a little bit. But um, it turned into a couple more interceptions, and Pete Carroll didn't like that. So then he would bring up, you know, let's let's just run the ball, run the ball. That's what's the safe way to go. My defense can handle it. And so I think with, is it Nathaniel Hackett that's there now? Yeah, yes. Green Bay. Yep. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm excited for what Nathaniel Hackett can do with Russell Wilson. I've always viewed Russell Wilson as, like, if I'm ranking talents in the NFL that I want to start a franchise quarterback with, it probably goes Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson 
like equally. They would be yeah. my tier one. I'm not sure which one I would rather have. The, now, obviously, Mahomes is younger, so I'd probably go that route. But that's just, to me, how talented Russell Wilson is. I think if he was in an Andy Reid system, he could be Patrick Mahomes easily. Okay. So, with that being said, I think he has been limited by the Seattle offense. I think that there is an opportunity for Russell Wilson to kind of unlock that top three quarterback that he's never really been able to get up to. But that being said, this is a whole new situation, a whole new offense. I like the weapons there, but he also had great weapons in Seattle. So I think it's probably a pretty even swap there with getting Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and going from DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. But you got to build the rapport again. So I think all that to say, I think Russell Wilson's season will look like a slower start as they figure things out, but I wouldn't be, this is the most Russell Wilson thing ever, but I wouldn't be surprised if the second half of the season, you know, he's putting up top three quarterback numbers weekly. Okay. Um, I don't disagree with that, but this is a question a lot of people have. Okay. Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. What's the order? What's the order? <laughs> Who should I be targeting first? Whoever Let's goes use, last in yeah. drafts. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's honestly that's that's more where I lean is that wherever I can get the value for it, I think Jerry Judy will be overvalued. So, in my opinion, if I have to pick one that I think is going to be the alpha one, and I think it's going to distribute pretty evenly in my opinion. I don't I don't view Russell Wilson as a hyper targeting quarterback that's going to you know find his guy and just continue to throw at him. You saw that with Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. There'd be a Tyler Lockett week. There'd be a Metcalf week. Yeah, and so I think like- they're. Tim Swain or whatever gets a touchdown catch, yeah. we get so mad because it's not the guy. We exactly. <laughs> so I, I think there's room for all of these guys. My fear is that they, you know, the the shiny new toy of Russell Wilson there will make you, you know, pull these guys' drafts value so high that you don't even want to draft them. But to me, right now, from what I can see, I think Cortland Sutton is going to be the more undervalued one to where I think he could take that alpha role from Jerry Judy. I loved Jerry Judy in college. I just haven't seen it consistently enough in the NFL. I know Drew Locke was his quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, where those aren't great quarterbacks, but he needed. He just hasn't shown anything crazy special yet. No, he, he hasn't. He's been extremely disappointed in some leagues that we've been in. He has been part of so many trade packages. Yeah. Somebody's like, all right, maybe he'll be lucky on your roster. I can't have him burning a hole in mine, uh, even on my bench. Um, before we move to the fourth one, let's just say Javante Williams, I think will benefit greatly. From having Russ at quarterback. In our, in our local league, I have him as a keeper option. And please, Melvin Gordon, I beg you, sign with just the Baltimore Ravens. Probably by the now. time this comes out, this may have happened. But just just leave. You, you, you'll be so much happier on another team. And we, by that, I mean my team will be so much happier with Javante we, Williams. We in the fantasy community will appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm just going to let you talk this one whole through. Tyreek Hill, trade to the Dolphins. Very similar to Adams, wanted an extension, wanted to be top dollars, and the Chiefs couldn't do it because they're paying half a billion dollars to Patrick Mahomes. But Dolphin fan, look at him. You look what he's wearing. He's got yeah, the Dolphin gear I got on. it on. Ready? You know, it was a weird off season, and this is for you, Josiah, because I know you want to hear my take on what happened this day. Yeah. So this off season, obviously, the Dolphins went through all the tumult with Brian Flores losing the coach, the you know, all the accusations of our our owner paying to lose games. I mean, all this stuff going on, which honestly, if you want my opinion, that wouldn't surprise me if our owner did that. I mean, in the NFL, these guys want to, they want to get a leg up and they don't really care how it happens. So I could see that happening. All that being said, as a Dolphins fan, I was probably the closest I've been to saying, you know what, this season I'm good. Like I don't need to purchase any dolphin stuff. I'm not going to put my heart on the line for this team that just continues <laughs> to tear it down. Yeah. So that that was frustrating me at the start of this offseason. Since then, um they have gone hard in the paint to say the least. Um yes. they've added a top tier, the top tier um offensive lineman that was available in Teron Armstead from New Orleans. Oh, and yeah. then this big trade with Tyreek Hill which now puts Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill together. So on the day that this was happening, you know, it was a very quick escalation. I know everybody remembers kind of getting the news alerts of Tyree Kill. Oh, he's he might be available for trade. Oh, the Jets and the Dolphins are actually in discussions for oh, the Dolphins have, have traded everything this year in a draft their first in their draft for Tyree Kill. So that's basically what the compensation ended up being. This whole year's draft, I think we kept a third round pick. I think so. And then we ended up paying Tyreek 
this insane contract that's obviously the biggest ever to be made or whatever. <laughs> I may have been broken now by another wide receiver. I can't keep up with all the news yeah. that keeps happening. But. Every, everyone needs to thank uh, Christian Kirk for <laughs> resetting top dollar when a wide receiver two can get that much money. So all that being said, as a Dolphins fan, I like the move because I think you need to find out if Tua is the guy. And they've now surrounded Tua where they're going to know at the end of this year even if he gets injured, I think we know because injury's been a problem. So if right. he gets injured, I think that we need to move on. But we're going to know because the team around him is now talented enough that he needs to succeed. Or if he doesn't, then we move on. So yeah. that, that's kind of where I'm at as a Dolphins fan. I'm excited for this year. This is the most talented offense, I think, in my lifetime that I've ever seen. Tyreek yeah. Hill and Jalen Waddle should be fun. Best receivers Miami's probably ever had in their history <laughs> right here. They needed the yeah. Dan Marino's days. Uh, they're going to get some angry Dolphins fans there with Super Duper yeah. and Mark Clayton. So. R- real quick, <laughs> Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, I see a Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen from a couple years ago. Do you think they more rank back-to-back in the teens for fantasy value when we're looking at quarterback rankings and tiers or wide receiver rankings and tiers? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I think Tyreek does take a big hit. Leaving Patrick Mahomes will do that to you. He's not mm-hmm. going to be a top five option anymore, in my opinion. I think that the value may still come at Jalen Waddle because I think people were excited about him, but they're now probably like, oh, well, now since Tyreek Hill's there, he goes to the second fiddle. I'm not so sure. I, no. I, I think there's a possibility that Jalen Waddle finishes this year ahead of Tyreek Hill. And talk about finishing. <laughs> we thought this fifth guy in our top five chart here was finished, and that's Tom Brady. He retired. On your wedding day. <laughs> Everyone was excited, like checking their phones on my wedding day. And, and, and Rachel's like, what are they looking at the phones? I'm like, oh, just something big happened on my on He was my out doing day. this photo shoot, and I was, I was waiting for the photo of his watch going off in the face of Tom Brady's retired. But alas, it wasn't for real. Yeah, I put my, put my Apple watch on mute. I knew that for sure, not doing anything on my wedding day there. So, yeah, he retires on my day. To be, you know, trying to one up me, but he, then he he, he gave retires. it back to you. He gave it back. <laughs> Unretires. I think that's why he did it, just so Chris could have his wedding day to himself. So. I think this can be a quick one for us. We think now all those Buccaneers have value again. They're running it back again. Yeah, it's, they kept Fournette. Chris Godwin's still there. Mike Evans is still there. Yeah. Uh, Russell Gage was once a, a piece that they added, so that may have some fantasy impact. But besides that. Losing Ronald Jones is really the only big thing that happened there. Yep, and uh, Gronk is still undecided, but he'll show up. I, yeah, my guess is he, he's coming back. All right, so we're going a little rapid fire here at the end. We're talking about our personal favorites because there were so many moves. We want them to highlight just a little bit, and here we'll just solo talk about three of our favorite moves and then let the other guy talk. Sean, take it away. Three other moves that you really liked. So, yeah, back to Miami, of course. I'm, I'm the Miami Dolphins fan. I'm going to talk all Miami. Um, but... Again, surrounding Tua with talent, they they went out and they got um, Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a situation where I think it's going to be kind of similar to the San Francisco. Our head coach is from San Francisco. Same schemes probably coming in. And I think you're not going to know with these two guys who's going to be the real option. Now, yeah. it may be the healthy option because these two guys were injured much of last year. Um, so whichever one's healthy is probably the one you want. But... In draft season, I think this is going to be a difficult backfield to really understand what's going on. The gas man, Miles Gaskin, shout out to the ballers, nickname there. Um, He's still around, so they still have him. Uh, They don't have any picks in the draft now with the Tyreek trade, so I don't think there'll be any running back coming in to even further complicate things. Um, But yeah, I think think in that backfield, there's going to be value. It's just going to be difficult in draft season to figure that out. Okay. What's your next one? All right, and the next, um, where Chase Edmonds is leaving in Arizona, Mm -hmm. James Conner now, this isn't really a a pickup for Arizona, but more of a departure of Chase Edmonds. It dramatically improves James Conner's value, in my opinion. Um, He's a player that probably before this leaving of Chase Edmonds was going to be, he finished as, I think, the the fifth overall running back or something last year. So he, yeah. he he surprised people, but I would have guessed that his ADP with Chase Edmonds there is probably more like an RB2, not an RB1. And, th- and now it's legitimately, I think he has a shot to be <clears throat> close to that top five again because that Arizona offense, um, it's it's good. Kyler Murray's <laughs> able good. to move the ball down, yeah. the, down the field now, um, and they score a lot of points. And so if he continues to be that, that end zone running back and he's, 
he was successful in it last year. I don't see a big change for James Conner. You can almost copy-paste his season from last year. I think it's going to be similar. Injury would be the one concern, but besides that, I think he got a huge improvement this offseason. And then the last rapid-fire one I want to bring up is Juju, because I know a lot of people are going to want to know about Juju, because huge impact to Juju. As we talked earlier about Tyreek Hill leaving the, the Chiefs, well, Juju came in right before that happened, and so now he is the if so facto number one. one. Yeah. So until we see what happens in the draft, things could change. If they draft a first round wide receiver, I would say some value goes down for Juju. But as it stands right now, I mean, you're looking at Travis Kelsey and Juju Smith Schuster as the only receiving options that are worth anything in <coughs> Kansas City. Um, did Pring- no Pringle moved on? I think he he's moved on. I, I was he in Chicago. Yeah, I, I think so. I think now. he went to Chicago, and then we have. Um, McCole Hardman's still there, so I I still think there's value in McCole Hardman. <laughs> this is a, a broken record to <laughs> where people have tried it. tried to have this over. I saw enough in the playoffs last year to where I think that's kind of what the Chiefs thought with Tyreek was that, yes, this is going to hurt our offense, but we have a speed guy. He's not Tyreek Hill. I'm not saying that, but mm. he does have some of the same skill sets and speed to where they can use him on those type of plays they use Tyreek Hill with. So all that to say... I think that Juju may be overdrafted just because I think people are going to put him in that Tyreek role and say he's got a chance to be a number one wide receiver easy with Patrick Mahomes, and I think that's a scary thing to do with Juju. I think he obviously is going to be better than he was last year in Pittsburgh, Yeah. but to say that he jumps into a wide receiver one category to me is is too far. Yeah. I, another good thing is that his TikTok followers will go up because he gets to join <laughs> Jackson Mahomes, who... Right. <laughs> just, I just want to throw something at that guy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, my three, Matt Ryan trades to the Colts. Michael Pittman Jr. is now trustable, I think, day to, like week to week. Thank you. I have yes. him in a lot of leagues. <laughs> that, just there. And then Jonathan Taylor. Thomas. Jonathan Taylor <laughs> is now, he's phenomenal without him, but they don't need to stack the box all day. When they start getting to the the red zone, ten zone, goal line, what do you see as the difference between Wentz and Ryan? Do you see this as a significant upgrade, a kind of same same old same old? What is your slight upgrade with a proven veteran quarterback that's not going to make the dumb decisions that we saw Carson Wentz do last year? I love the marriage. I think it's yeah. I think it's a perfect place for Matt Ryan to go. It helps the Colts. It helps Matt yeah. Ryan. Doesn't doesn't have to do too much. Aaron Rodgers signing his extension with the Packers. Hopefully it's the end of the drama where he goes on Pat McAfee <laughs> it's, it's, and says something It's never something the new. end of the drama with, with Aaron Rodgers. Who, who's he throwing to? I have no clue. But at least Aaron Rodgers staying with the Packers for with a three-year extension. So at least two more years after this, uh, he should be a Green Bay Packer. So all you other franchises wishing and hoping he comes to you, I don't think it's happening in the foreseeable Until future. Until next year when Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers are traded for each other, right? Yeah, I know, right? That's, that'd be nuts. <laughs> And then Allen Robinson signing with the Rams. Robert Woods is in Tennessee. We have Noah uh, Odell Beckham is. He, it looks like around right now. Yeah, he's he's probably coming back to the Rams. I just saw a report on his injury mm-hmm. that they actually. It was weird. They said it was a good thing that he got this injury because apparently the original surgery that they did, they missed something and didn't repair it the way they should have, and oh, wow. they've now repaired it better and said his career has been lengthened because of this second surgery. So all that to say, not a doctor. Tim James maybe can put a comment in here as to if I'm talking out my butt, but I think that he's probably coming back to the Rams, so I would factor that into what you're... Yeah, so he it, it could be a three-headed monster. Allen Robinson brings something different than Odell and, and uh, Cooper Cup key, uh, brings, and that's a bigger target. And Matthew Stafford had a really good big man target early in his career in Megatron. <laughs> so not Megatron numbers, but we can now feel okay to draft Allen Robinson, I think, late wide receiver three flex opportunities Okay, because we got a quarterback we can trust. I was going to ask, do you think you can – put him in the Robert Woods role and get similar production, or do you think it'll be a little discounted to that to where it won't be quite Discounted, because I think Odell does better in that role. Okay. But we'll see how, how good Odell comes back from that, that knee injury. But Allen Robinson used to be QB proof. <laughs> and then we found out Chicago messed that up it was last year. I think that Allen Robinson QB proof is what we'll, we'll feel again. He just won't be a wide receiver one for you. But he's draftable. He won't be sitting on your bench. He'll be a flex guy. 
and maybe a wide receiver too. If Odell I feel like you're talking to back. me because last year I, in our <laughs> league, I drafted Allen Robinson with my first pick that I had because we do keepers in the first few rounds, and I was ecstatic to get Allen Robinson. I was huge Allen Robinson fan last year, and we know how that went badly, oh, really, man. really badly. So my heart has always liked Allen Robinson, and I I want success for him, but. I am a little yeah. trepidatious now. Your after. heart, a little will, gun shy. <laughs> your heart will go on. <laughs> um, that's it for our reactions here with the trading free agency. We probably missed out on a couple. Put you know in the comments there. We'll love to chat with you guys and let us know, let you know what we think. If you, all these other moves we missed, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks after the NFL draft. Um, it's sitting here what April fifteenth, so about two weeks away. Yep is the NFL draft and we don't really like doing one beforehand because we don't know who's going where. Yep. So we don't want to speculate. And for fantasy, that's that matters so highly. So mm-hmm. finding out where these players are going to be if they're draftable. We don't cover as much of the dynasty side, which is what would be the rookies. Um but I think that this year there are some potentials with these wide receivers as we've talked about to where yeah. there could be some redraft options here. And uh we love dynasty, so we'll <laughs> probably nerd out a little more there. I mean, we just had a league trade happen while we were recording. <laughs> we got called and texted uh, for our advice on some stuff. So Yeah, let us know in, in Facebook group and in the in the comments. Like is is dynasty something you guys want to hear about? Because if you want to hear about it, I think we want to talk about it. Yeah. I mean <laughs> we can grow that too. Anything else, Kamish? No, I think that's it. Um, sorry, it was such a long absence. We hope to do at least maybe two or three more this off season, and then we're planning on coming back for season five. I think five I think. or six. Something yeah, like five that. or six somewhere. In the, you tell us. We don't. We can't remember <laughs> anymore. So. All right, guys. Until then. Deuces. deuces. Thanks for listening to the Coach and Commish podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Coach and Commish. And join our Facebook group called Fantasy Football Advice with the Coach and Commish for direct access to weekly waiver wire and start sit advice.